Good morning everybody, and it is still morning, just about. We have got another solar survey today. This time it's the Zanussi chap that's coming, and he should be there. Cheers. Right, we're just getting everything all measured up again, and um, then hopefully I'm going to get to take the Evolve board out and give it a proper little run. So I was speaking to Dan from Zanussi about the reason why I want at least some power storage right from the word go. Basically, I just want to smooth out the power. I want to be able to get home and plug the car in just as I do and not think to myself, oh, I should lower the charge rate, otherwise I'll have to import some power or schedule it for later in the day or any of that nonsense. Because apart from anything, if I let the battery in the car sit there at 40%, then I run the risk of having some sort of emergency journey, let's say, up to my parents, and not having enough power to do that without stopping and charging en route. It's just, it's a level of hassle I want to avoid. I want to be able to use the car just exactly the way that I do at the moment, which is I get home, I plug it in, it charges back to 70%, and then I've got enough charge to do any reasonable length journey that I want to do without worrying about you know, superchargers. Loads of people have mentioned to me about solar tiles, either Tesla ones or ones from another company. I really don't think the planners would go for that because you're fundamentally changing the materials of the building. And if somebody, say in 20 years time, wanted to go back to the original roof, it would be an enormous job. And that's even without touching things like cost. I mean, honestly, when you look at it, Solar tiles don't really make a huge amount of sense. I think the ultimate future for roofing of a house is not going to be all new houses come with solar tiles. It's going to be, rather than having small tiles like this, the roof will be made up of much larger solar panel units and they just won't bother with the underlying tiles. Well, that was interesting and fun and Dan is now off on his merry way to go and talk to the next customer. He's gonna pop back in a couple of days time to go through the finance with Soph because she's definitely the one who should be signing off the finance on this particular project. And then the good news is we'll hopefully get into that application process and actually find out whether planning permission is gonna be a problem or hopefully they'll just go, it's fine, stick it up there. Right, and now, as the sun is out, I think it's time to try out the old... Uh... The hill climbing ability of this board is really quite good actually. Still prefer the idea of having a thumb throttle. I don't know why, it just seems more precise somehow. This is gonna make me lazy. Still saying 100% after that hill climb. Yeah, probably just... There we go. Seriously not designed for people holding cameras. I think we'll just, we'll put that down when we're messing with cameras. This is gonna take a bit of getting used to, the way the throttle works. I'll get there. Probably doesn't help that I'm right-handed and, um, I have to hold this in my left hand because of the uh, camera. Got up to 10 miles an hour. So it's terrifying to think it'll go twice that fast, easily. The range on this thing is astounding. Like, no question. Seriously, crazy range. Oh, it says 99% now. When I was going along, it did say 97% and I've done 1.8 miles already. Get in the hang of that super sensitive throttle. I have got it in fast mode because there are some hills I'll need to climb. And this is actually a hill I'm going down. So uh, I love the fact that these things have brakes. I think the trucks might be a little bit loose for my taste. I mean, I like being able to do tight corners, but 
it makes it a bit freaky when you start going quickly. I still have only got it up to 12 miles an hour. It's the fastest I've gone so far and that felt pretty damn quick. Now I'm wearing the helmet today because I am going faster than I can run. Very definitely faster than I can run. You know, it's in fast now and the trigger is like, like a hair trigger. I'm actually terrified by what it must be like in GT, which is the stupidly fast mode. Well, I would definitely characterize this as a very successful test, about three miles total. Currently, with no load on the battery, it says 96% charged. <sighs> Well, that was properly awesome. Okay, it is now time to get Jasper. And time for me to give you a solar update. Basically, it's all good. We just have to get another sort of, you know, credit check on the finance for it all, and then sign on the dotted line and they will apply for the planning permission. And if we get it, then fantastic. We'll get those solar panels put up there. And if we don't, then we just part ways and it's cost us nothing. So, so far I'm quite happy with Zanussi and what they've done. I do think that you have to be a bit careful looking for solar in this country. One thing I have worked out pretty instantly is that the people that come round, some of them know what they're talking about, some of them know a little bit about what they're talking about, and some of them just downright lie. I've had a bunch of different things that people have told me about feed-in tariffs and whether they apply or whether they apply in this area or do I have to sign up really soon otherwise I'm not going to get them or get a reduced rate or it's just it seems like a real quagmire of misinformation so my advice is if you're going to go for solar do a good amount of research and then sort of sense check it to see if it sounds sensible or not because they really do seem to just spout any old rubbish at you. Some people, not not others, you know. Obviously, I'm going with people that seem like they know what they're talking about because that's a reasonably good idea, but that is not by any means all of them. Chelsea? Maybe I should just leave him to snooze for a little bit. One quick thing I almost forgot to mention about this solar survey was there was a really interesting little graph thing that would show how much of the different solar panels would be shaded at different times of the year and different times of the day. I thought that was quite clever. And I mean, just generally, it seemed like quite a thorough operation today. The most thorough and interesting and comprehensive of the ones that I've had so far. So unless something comes up and prevents it from going ahead, like planning permission, I think we're going to be going with Zanussi. Slowly but surely, I'm getting used to the trigger. still recommend being able to foot brake even though this thing has quite impressive brakes all on its own. Just kind of a safety thing because anything can fail including the brakes on the skateboard because they're electric in nature as opposed to mechanical. Okay well Jasper has awoken from his sleep and I think it's now time for me to make him some supper. So I hope you've enjoyed today's blog post. If you have, remember to like it, share it and subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on Instagram if you don't already and I'll see you tomorrow for the next instalment of my daily vlog. Bye. I could quite happily do this all day and as it turns out, so could the battery. So now that I'm putting some juice on it, it's saying 87% which still isn't bad when you consider that I've used almost a fifth of the off-road wheel range.